I think we're live. I think we are live. I believe we are live. I'm waiting for it to show up. Looks like we're live. What's up, guys? Sorry for the uh, two-ish minute delay. Um, I was unexpectedly having some issues uh, with my capture system. I, I don't know what was going on there, but uh, I had to actually reinstall OBS and then reconfigure all of my presets and reconfigure all of my scenes. And uh, that was unexpected. Uh, so sorry about that, but uh, it's only two minutes. I think, uh, I think we can live with that. Uh, so it's been a while since I did one of these live streams. And uh, let me know, as always, if there's a problem with the audio or with the video. Uh, I did some quick testing uh, beforehand and everything sounded and looked okay. So uh, I'm always just worried about like volume and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, it's good to be back. I haven't done one of these streams in quite a while, actually. Um, and it wasn't for lack of wanting or trying. Uh, it was basically just a timing thing and uh, getting through the holidays and then um, through CES. And then uh, I tend to, to not do a live stream uh, if my wife is here, not because I'm embarrassed or something, but just because if she's here and I'm here and it's, you know, a time when I might stream like at night, we're usually doing something else, you know, going out or watching a movie or whatever that may be. So, um, I, as with the rest of the activities on this channel, I try to maintain some kind of a balance when I have time to spend with my wife. I tend to try to do that. Uh, so, just the combination of, you know, some circumstances over the past month or two have meant that I haven't had a time or opportunity to stream. So uh, I apologize for that. I know I like doing it. I enjoy interacting with you guys, uh, answering your questions as, as best I can. Uh, I know I don't always have all the answers, but, um, you know, I think that, uh, well, I hope that you guys enjoy it too. So um, Hopefully this uh, lengthy delay between live streams has allowed you guys to rack up some some really good questions for me, and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have a good stream uh, once everybody gets in here. So uh, yeah, right now we only have uh, 37. Is that really all we have? So right now we only have 37 people in here. So uh, I will wait just a smidgen more time before we get into answering some questions and whatnot, or getting into the um, I guess we could call them topics because I, I don't really have, there's no like, um, you know, um, topic list uh, for for this live stream. I just put some stuff in the title that I, you know, kind of maybe wanted to touch on and maybe you guys had some questions about as well. Um, so yeah, before we get into any of that, we'll just, uh, let me just, um, I guess I'll just run my mouth for, for another couple minutes till we get a few more people uh, in here. Uh, but as always, uh, thank you to Rodimus for moderating. Uh, if you see him lurking around in chat, make sure to say hello. Um, oh, I just Jacob Tran says, "Show us your puppy." Where is the puppy? I think he's. Uh, I think he's upstairs right now. If he comes down here, I'll definitely, I'll definitely show him uh, to you guys. Uh, but he has been. He is. <laughs> so I don't know how familiar you guys are with uh, with French bulldogs. But they are, um, they're not the quietest of animals. They snort a lot, uh, and, uh, they're, they're goofy. They're, the, the other name for them is clown dogs, because they're, they're very entertaining animals. Um, but, yeah, if he comes down here, you guys will probably know it, because he, he's not very graceful when he comes down the steps, and then when he comes in, he'll probably be snorting up a storm. Um, so I will definitely show him to you guys. And his name is Indiana, uh, if you guys are curious. Uh, or Indy, as we call him, and he's he's pretty great. Still kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass because he is still a puppy, but he's almost full grown at this point. Uh, they don't get all that big. He's not like a um, a, a long or tall animal. Uh, he's fairly compact, but they get they're very dense. They're very they're bulldogs. They're very muscular. So he'll get to be about 25 pounds or so, and right now he's like 22, 23 pounds. So he's almost full grown. And he's still a puppy, so he still acts like a puppy and has puppy energy, uh, but he is a full-grown dog. So um, it's been a handful dealing with him, but uh, but he's great. Um, so we got 50, 
50 something people in here now okay um so anyway anyway yeah so megan is away at work away at work she's at work um and i figured that i had the opportunity today to uh to hop on here answer some questions from you guys talk about ces a little bit if you guys aren't completely burnt out on that um that's a whole nother topic that we'll we'll talk about ces burnout i guess um but uh, i also wanted to talk about uh you know i don't know how many rtx and gtx cards can be announced and coming at the same time but we got more of those on the way uh, i still haven't put out any coverage of the rtx 2060s i have um a bunch of them uh and i will do something with them but um just i haven't had a chance to yet um super chat came through thank you very much games coffee and collecting says brian you're you're an inspiration for me as a creator love your content i'm excited to see your channel grow in 2019 uh well if you are a creator i am glad that i am inspiring you i you know to be honest um i never really consider myself to be like a, a creative person per se i was much more along the lines of science scientific type mind um but when i got into doing this you tend to activate those centers in your brain that really make you look at things from a different way and, and like you have to be artistic with your content in order to you know make yourself stand out so i guess i am a creator and if i have inspired you to become one uh then more power to you man and i'm glad uh that i have helped so thank you for your donation um all right um so let me uh, let me scroll up and just read through some comments see who's here and then we'll kind of dive into the first thing that i wanted to chat about uh so rodimus is here jeff m is here kenny d is here reddick sink wolf martin um sminklet with a bunch of other names ghoster um mitsun haiku hiku kyle tune um all right, Girish Sardly, Sardi. All right, so a bunch of people are in here now. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in on a Saturday night, I suppose. I guess it's Saturday night in the United States. Um, if you are elsewhere in the world, cheers to you. Um, and I know that uh, it's a big thing with live streams to kind of let people know what you're drinking. And most of the time, other people who are live streaming are drinking beer. Um, but as you guys likely are aware if you're uh if you've seen any of my live streams before i can't drink beer i have a, an allergy to gluten so i drink wine instead uh this is a merlot from gergich hill estate in napa my wife and i went out there uh two years ago now a year and a half i don't know uh, not that long ago and uh, we went to gergich uh it is one of the oldest wineries in napa i think and um they make some fantastic wines the their merlot i'm not usually a fan of merlot but their merlot is excellent so if you ever go, if you guys are ever looking for a really really great uh glass of red wine check out the gergich hills estate old vine zinfandel it's probably my favorite red wine uh, but this is the merlot it's still really good and cheers to you guys if you're having a beverage so Another super chat, Rodimus. Just because five dollars. Thank you, sir. You don't have to donate. You are the you're the moderator. What are you doing? Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So, what are people talking about? Rodimus says Kyle rubbed off on you with being late. Awesome hardware is never on time, I suppose. But you know, one of the, one of my pet peeves is actually punctuality. So, I try to be on time whenever possible. This time there wasn't something you know, unfortunately, a little bit out of my control. Um, Cody Sanders. Hey, Brian, still rocking that 32 inch curve display you sent me. Cody Sanders is the one who, uh, a year, a year and a half ago, I reviewed, um, a 32 inch monitor that uh, was, that came from Gearbest, which is like the Amazon equivalent in China and Gearbest it's uh, themselves sent me that the first 32 inch 1080p monitor that I didn't like. There were a lot of reasons I didn't like it, but I knew that it would probably be an upgrade for a lot of people. Um, and uh, it was a giveaway and Cody won it. So I'm glad you are still enjoying it and that it is uh, serving you well. 
Kenny D says, everything looks and sounds great. Okay, I probably should have read that comment earlier, but thank you. I'm glad. All right. Uh, Gatamon Talmon says, oh, he waves hello. Well, hello to you. Kenny D says, can you upgrade my 950 to a 1080? No. Uh, Girish Sardi says, OBS is supposed to get a January 29th update for GTX and RTX. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm always a little uh, a little wary of OBS updates because they tend to break things. So um, maybe I will install it on a secondary machine and um, and see how that goes, and uh, and then maybe port it over to this this one. So because until today things have been perfectly stable for me for a long time now. So um, yeah. OBS updates are always moderately terrifying. Uh, Ayub Harry says, I'm so lucky. It's my first time here in this live, I mean, in BPS Customs live stream, and yet it works great. Well, welcome to you. Thank you for coming in and hanging out. Paladin George says, yo, 100K hype. And then Jacob Tran says, congrats on the 100K button. Thank you so much, guys. So this is, I mean, I don't know how much I wanted to talk about this because I did make that video the other day about getting the button. I actually have the button literally sitting right next to me. I have not yet hung it up. Um, but um, it was, so the reason that it came, it was kind of unexpected is that um, because the channel was experienced such fast growth during that, that giveaway um, and then had been, losing subscribers and still is losing subscribers unfortunately um i think when i talk to youtube about the button because they're supposed to evaluate your channel within a week of you passing 100k and then i i guess let you know if you get a button or not uh and it had been months since i passed 100k and they still didn't want to send me one and i didn't know what was going on um and uh in talking to them, they made it clear that they were still looking at that weird subscriber growth and then regression, I guess. Oh, wait, but I'll continue on that in a second. I got another super chat from Kenny D. What's your opinion on the Inwin A1 Plus case? Um, I promise you I will talk about that in a, when we talk about CES. So if I don't, remind me, but I will definitely get to your super chat and thank you very much for your donation. Um, so anyway, so about the 100K thing. So I actually talked to them a couple of times about what's going on with the, the button because I felt like, I mean, I understand that the um, a big boost in subscribers was not, it didn't look organic, but they were actual people that were subscribing to me. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't fraudulent in any way. So... Um, Basically, I, I had asked them a couple of times, what's the deal? And they couldn't give me a straight answer. And then all of a sudden, um, uh, it showed up. Like, I, I, had, I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that I didn't ask for it. Like, you have to request the button. And I had done that, but they told me no. It, it was a kind of a bizarre situation that all of a sudden it just showed up. So I guess they figured out that my subscribers are legitimate. And they sent me the button. Somebody made a comment on the um, on that that video that they hope that I don't fall under 100k because that would be awkward and that would certainly be awkward. And I really hope the regression stops before 100,000. That would be tragic. That would be like losing 30,000 subscribers. And to be clear, my rate of subscriber growth, like subscriber ads, since the um, since the giveaway started so at when the giveaway started i was adding about um 35 to 45 subscribers a day um and in the youtube analytics when you go in there you could actually see um, not only net subscribers like plus or minus but you could see how many people subscribed versus how many people unsubscribed and then you could also see the net total so if you have a day where you get 100 subscriber ads but 200 people leave you're negative 100 but you've still added 100 subscribers 100 new people still signed up so in my analytics i could see that my rate of subscriber ads is now actually significantly increased since the giveaway so there are 
more people subscribing to me now than there were before. It's just that to offset that, there are a lot more people leaving, so my numbers look red. So it's unfortunate, and it looks it looks bad. If you look at my social blade right now, it looks bad. It's like a bloodbath, um, and it's frustrating that my numbers keep going down. I you know, I hope that they stop. I hope it stops soon. Um, I didn't realize, I didn't think that it would be this bad as far as how many people wanted to leave after the giveaway. Um, but I can't stop them. So, um, whatever happens happens and I have the button anyway. So even if we go below a hundred thousand, which would be crazy, um, we'll get back above it sooner, soon after that. So, um, but Thank you anyway, and I obviously couldn't have gotten the 200k without you guys, so um, this wines for you, or something. Alright, uh, Angel says, I enjoy your channel since I discovered it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching it. Uh, Charles Phillips asks, hey Brian, have you recovered from CES yet? Uh, so that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. CES, I mean, yeah, I, I actually got sick after CES. So, um, it, it was, uh, it was not a pleasant experience actually like on the plane ride home, it, it must've been a bunch of people that were at CES that were flying home because the airport was packed and the flight was packed and everybody looked like they had, they were ready to just keel over and die. Um, same, same as me probably at the, at that point. Uh, but there were like people just like sneezing all over and coughing and hacking up God knows what, um, I think like it, everybody on that plane sounded like they were sick. And by the time I got off the flight, uh, my mom actually picked me up from the airport. Hi mom, if you're watching. Uh, and I was like, I'm sick. Like she could tell and I knew it. And I'm like, I just, I got off the plane and I'm like, wow, this is, things have gone bad. So, um, CES is, it, it's because it's just so physically draining. And that's actually one of the reasons that I wanted to bring somebody with me this year, uh, is because, uh, so much of the craziness that happens there is so physically draining because not only are you having to run between hotels. And if you're familiar with Vegas, running between hotels does not mean like running next door to your neighbor's house. You could take 15 minutes walking from one hotel to the hotel across the street. Like they are enormous, they are far apart, you have to follow certain walking pathways, and when you're carrying a whole bunch of gear, and you're doing it for seven days straight, you get exhausted. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring somebody. Um, Mike uh, came with me this year, and it was great having him there. Originally my plan was to just have somebody come to help me carry things, like somebody who um, could carry some gear and then point a camera at my face. And that was really all I wanted. And as it turns out, I was let you know, I thought about it. I'm like, it would be really nice to have somebody with some additional skills if I need that. So Mike has a channel of his own and he is familiar with filming and he, it's a tech channel. So he knows the products. Uh, he knows how to film. He knows how to edit it. Uh, and, um, it was nice to be able to have him there. I actually sent him to a couple suites by himself because I, I had double booked us like on purpose. So, you know, we were able to cover more ground that way. Uh, he was able to help me out by not only carrying stuff, but filming me so I could have more diverse shots. It wouldn't always have to be me holding the camera, like pointing at things so you could actually see me in the shots. Uh, so that was beneficial. Uh, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the CES coverage. I think I was really happy with how it went off, but um, CES fatigue is real. CES viewer fatigue, and by the end of my CES coverage, like nobody was watching. Like I, I it was real. I mean, the videos at the end compared to the videos at the beginning got like not even half the views, um, and it's just burnout, right? Like. For a week straight, everybody who subscribed to me is likely also subscribed to Jay and to Paul and to Kyle and to Linus and to whoever in the Hardware Canucks and whoever else was out there and is seeing coverage of the same booths for you know and the same products for an entire week straight. So every day you could ha literally have a different video in your inbox of the same Corsair suite, but just filmed by a different dude. So people get tired of that, and I don't blame you. 
So, but the thing is like, that's, it would, I have, I still have to go. Like I still have to go and film those suites. I still have to go and talk to those people. There's products there that I need to cover as a weird to say a tech journalist of sorts. So, um, you know, it, but the viewer fatigue is real and, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the way I did the coverage. I, I'm probably going to do something similar next year. Only I might do a few less videos because by the end of the week, by the, so I had two full weeks of CES coverage. And by the end of that two weeks, I still had five or six more videos in the can five or six more videos worth of content, different vendors that you guys d d didn't see. Um, other, like I had multiple videos from like the MSI suite. Uh, I mean, I just could, I'm, I just didn't publish them. They're just, I just have them on my, um, on my storage array right now. They, that's, they will just stay there forever. I don't have, I'm not going to publish any more CES content. I was just done. Two weeks is enough. Um, but I mean, as always, CES was amazing. It was a great time. It's awesome to see all the, my friends in the industry, which, who I never get to see. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I, you guys probably saw on social media some posts about, um, you know, us getting together and doing stuff when there were some parties and um, other dinners and whatever else. It was great. It was a great time. Um, and I think I broke, I think I broke Mike. I think I broke my production assistant because he was kind of spent at the end. I don't know if he, I, I had warned him that it was, it's hectic, but I don't know that he quite knew what he was getting himself into initially. Anyway, he did great. But uh, I think by the end, he was just about done. Uh, so, but thank you very much, Mike, if you're watching. Uh, could not have done it without you. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, I'll be back next year. And I mean, I'll be at Computex. So we'll start the whole thing over in a couple of months. Jeez. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> um, let me drink some wine and read some questions. Uh, Evil Angel 971 says, why does Radeon 7 feel like it was released just because? Um, so I did want to talk about Radeon 7. And um, one of the reasons... Oh, super chat from Derek Gott. Two bucks. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Thanks, man. You too. Um, I lost the question. Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay, so I did want to talk about Radeon 7. So I had a meeting with AMD, and that's one of the videos that I never published was my video on AMD. Um, had a meeting with them, talked to them extensively about Radeon 7, uh, talked to like the their graphics team, basically. So um, we, we got to talk about some things that um, I am not really ready to share just yet. Um, but they did confirm what everybody's saying that it's that it's an instinct card that's been ported over to play games basically um and i i also was able to talk to a couple of the aib partners who normally release um amd partnered graphics cards and i got some inside info from them on this whole launch process and i so, so that I don't violate the confidence of my sources, I'm going to refrain from being specific here. But let, let me say that what you, what Evil Angel, what you said, it was released just because it's not far off. Um, there, um, this was not, this was not AMD's original plan. And um, they kind of had this in their back pocket and it's now being released. So without being more specific than that, so just so that I am not, like I said, violating the confidence of anybody, um, I, I hope that that is satisfactory information for you guys. I could probably talk more about this after the release of the card, um, but I will check with my sources to see if it's okay. Um, so... Yes, you're not wrong in feeling that way. It's kind of a, well, this is what we got situation. It's not necessarily what they were wanting to do. <clears throat> New member, Brian Stinson. Thanks, man. I like your name. I like your initials. Man, good man right there, Brian Stinson. New channel member. Um, okay. 
All right, Kenny D, you asked your opinion on a new A1 Plus. So I built in the original in, uh, Inwin A1. It actually was one of my most popular videos from last year. It ended up with like 150,000 views or something. Um, it was a system that I love putting together, building in that thing. It's like a it's like a toaster, um, and it comes with a power supply. So you don't and with with the cabling that's the right length, so you don't have to worry about doing that. Um, the Inwin A1 itself was was great, and the Plus is just better. It went from a 600 watt bronze power supply to a 650 gold. The uh, lighting on the like the underglow lighting is now addressable RGB. The Qi charger on top is now, what did they say? Did they say it's, uh, it's not quick charge. It's not wireless quick charge because they don't, I don't think they got the certification, but it's of the same kind of charging uh, power that a quick charge would be. So it's going to charge your devices faster. Um, so, the, I mean, it's the same case with some minor improvements and I fairly certain they said it was the same price. So... I liked the original and the plus is just better. So it's a really good case. If you don't mind, like it's not easy to build in, it's tiny. And you really got to make sure that you, the dimensions of the hardware that you're using are appropriate for that case. But it fits full size graphics cards. It fits some tower coolers. Um, and I mean, if you can put a system together in there, it's a hell of a thing to see. Cause it's like, it's tiny. Um, and it's really cool looking. So yeah, I definitely like it. <clears throat> okay. Scroll down. Uh, Mike, the manic geek, who was my, uh, my dude in CES says what? So when's that new fractal design album dropping? Uh, so yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar. So Fractal tweeted out a picture. Um, we were doing some some goofy shots when we did the 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 promos. We shot a whole bunch of promos. There's gonna be some more ads coming up. Some of them are really funny. Um, we shot a whole bunch of ads when we were in in Vegas at CES with a Lamborghini and the new Meshify S2. Um, and they during the shooting they took some some goofy stills of us like posing like we were rappers. They called it our album cover shots. And they released one of them on Twitter the other day. And it's me and Greg Salazar posing like we're some kind of thugs sitting on the hood of this Lamborghini and Greg's wearing lady sunglasses. So it's hysterical. And they put like the, you know, uh, parental advisory explicit content warning on it. Um, it was great. So album drop soon. Check it out. Um, Kyle Toon asks if this is a sweeter wine. No, it is not. This is a, this is a, it's a Merlot. It's not a sweet wine. I d really don't like sweet wines. There's a lot of wineries around here in Maryland that are really keen on, um, um, infusing their wines with sugar and flavoring. And it's awful. It's just garbage. It tastes like fruit juice. That's not wine. This is not a sweet wine. Uh, sweet wines are a thing. And I do like wines that are purposefully made to be sweet without adding sugar and whatnot. But this is not. This is not that. Rodimus says I'm anxious for the new Inwin budget fans. Um, yeah, they were really cool looking, and I completely am blanking on the name. Um, but they're three dollars, three dollars, thirty dollars for a three pack, which is a great deal. Great deal for those. They're uh, static pressure optimized fans, and they have a little RGB effect and. Good, I mean, good all around. Uh, Byron79 says, any plans to finish your Case Labs case? Currently working on mine. I don't know what you mean by that. I built a system in that, and it exploded. So, <laughs> uh, my, that case, that was, I mean, that, that system was done. Um, went through a whole bunch of videos on the channel with it. It was awesome. Um, Project Baron, if you go on, if you want to search the channel for it, that, that system was built and finished. Uh, the loud oof says, what do you like more NVIDIA or AMD? I don't, I don't have a preference. And, um, it's interesting that people, um, think that I'm, that I might and call me a shill in one way or another. I mean, I guess that's, 
That's how you know you've made it as a tech tuber when somebody calls you an Intel or NVIDIA or AMD shill. Um, I currently use NVIDIA because it is the most powerful and that doesn't look like it's going to change, but I have nothing against AMD. Project Baron was an all AMD system with two Vega 64 and it worked great. Um, but for single card, it's a 2080 Ti. It's the most powerful GPU. So that's what I use. Um, Jeremy Shirley asks, any good place to learn OBS? It's not really that complicated, to be honest. And they, uh, OBS, when you install it, has a, um, it has like an optimizer. You could like, it, it sets optimal settings for your system just by like hitting one click. Um, I, and there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, I'm sure, about how to do things. OBS is a free program. So it's not like you're taking any risk by downloading it and trying to fiddle with it. So just, just give it a whirl. <clears throat> Fighting Squid, I subbed because of the giveaway, but was impressed with your channel and plan on staying. Great content. Cheers to you. Joe Brown says, how is Thready McThreadripper doing? Well, I never had a system that was named that. Um, if you mean Project Baron, again, it has exploded. So, rip Project Baron. Uh, Games Coffee Collecting says, what was your editing rig while you were at CES? I actually just brought laptops with me. Um, I, it was, I brought my razor blade. I, I did, I did a video on like what was in my CES bag, what I brought with me and, um, that my editing system was, uh, my, my 2018 razor blade is GTX 1070 razor blade. And, uh, also, and Mike's editing system was the electronics mech 15 G2, same specs, GTX 1070, um, 8750H, 16 gigs of Ram. Those machines will chew through 1080p footage, which is what we were shooting when we were there. Only shoot 1080p. Um, and they were excellent for what we needed them to do. JJ asks, what are your thoughts about the Thermaltake Level 20 GT? I did an entire review of the Thermaltake Level 20 GT at launch. So um, go check it out. Sean Lawrence, hey, from Bermuda, keep up the great work. Cheers to Bermuda. <clears throat> okay. Sync Wolf Martin, do you think RTX 2060 cards are going to to good and sell are going to sell well i assume you mean because mostly because everyone is down in them because of price but you're able to have ray tracing when more titles come out um so like i said i ha i mean i haven't done any just rtx 2060 this is the zotac uh i don't know if it has a name i'm not going to read you the skew zotac gaming GeForce RTX 2060 6 gigabyte. There it is. Um, so I have the Zotac card. I have an MSI card. Uh, I have um, Asus Strix. I have a gigabyte card. And I'm supposed to have a Founders card coming. Uh, NVIDIA told me they were sending me one. And it's not here yet. So I'm kind of waiting for that to get here before I publish content on these. Um, because... Ooh, what was that? Uh, because I wanted to do kind of like a comparison, kind of like I did with the 2070 coolers. I actually thought I liked that video. I liked the way it came out. I liked the information that I ended up with and ended up um, talking about. And I kind of want to do the same thing for these, but with more performance data, because that video was more along the lines of cooling performance, boost clocks, thermals, stuff like that. Um, I want to do the same for these, but also give you more gaming performance data at comparison. So um, I haven't fully formulated my opinion on RTX 2060s yet. I've only just started doing the testing on these. I've, I think this card and the MSI card are the only ones that I actually have numbers for yet. Um, so uh, just overall, I could say they perform really well. Like for So it's $350, and I think everybody's hang up is that 
the uh, the the identifier, the number identifier on the card is 60. So it's an, a 60 series. So we had 960, 1060, 2060. And traditionally, the 60 series cards have been less expensive. But when you look at the performance tier that the 2060s occupy, it's actually really good. So I think that you're... I think people need to get over the hump of thinking of it. It's a 2060 card. It's a 60 series card, so it has to be less expensive. I mean, it would have been nice if Nvidia could have con could have continued that. My feeling is that the more uh, complicated package that includes not only the CUDA cores but the RT cores and the Tensor cores is more costly to produce. We're using new memory standard to GDDR6, which is more expensive than GDDR5. Um, and I had to put all the R&D into um, getting ray tracing, real-time ray tracing to work. There's a lot of factors that went into the pricing here. I'm not saying that they are in the right in any way, to be honest. I wish the prices were certainly lower. Flagship cards at $1,200 is kind of absurd. Um, at the same time, the performance is 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 pretty good. Like, it's it's almost worthy of that. Like I think if, I think if the 2060s came out at $300, that would have been... That would have been the deal. That would have been what everybody wanted. So, I have to blow my nose. Excuse me. Let me scoot off camera for a second. Hey guys. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So, um, where was I? Oh, so 2060s. So, uh, yes, they are slightly overpriced. No, I don't think that they're a waste of money. Um, and I, I, I will, I'm going to reserve my final judgment until I do all my testing. So, we'll see. But it looks like a decent product from what I've done so far. All right. Um, Jeremy Shirley says, I'm watching on my TV and chatting on my phone. Amazing the difference in color. Well, which one is better? Which one looks better? Um, Christopher Yee, what's up, bro? <laughs> hey, you hold this and point it at my face. Next time, um, we'll do something together uh, at CES for sure. I... I uh, so Chris and I ran into each other a couple times. Um, and one time, literally, we were like running past each other at Bellagio. I had just come down from like um, EVGA and Be Quiet, and he was going the other way, going up, I think. And it was like it was kind of like, "Hey, Chris, hey, Brian," and we just kind of like, Phew! and that was it. Uh, and it was one other time I think we saw each other, but um, yeah, Chris, thanks for being in chat, thanks for hanging out, and. Um, Next time we'll uh, we'll we'll try to work on some kind of collab down there for sure. Um, here's the real question: How cool was Ian? Says Derek Gott. He's referring to uh, Ian Torn TV, who helped us out on the fractal shoot. Um, well, I'll tell you what: his minivan, his minivan gets the ladies. So that's all that matters. Manny Media Tech says, what's up, Brian? How you doing, bro? Do you know or heard at CES when Asus will be releasing the Rampage 6 Omega? So they told me that there was no firm release date on those yet, but they were coming, literally what my rep said is they are coming very soon, and that was beginning of January. Um, so I think that they should be out pretty soon. I mean, like I said, I don't have a firm date, but... From, uh, from what they were saying, um, it sounded like they were basically ready. <clears throat> uh, Paladin George says, I got pretty burned out on CES. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the general consensus, and I, I don't blame you guys. I mean, we still got to do what we got to do, but, I mean, you guys don't have to watch it all. So, I, I get it. Hold on. 
I lost my place. Sorry guys, lost my place. Scrolling up. Scrolling up. Uh, okay. There we are. Okay. Um... Computex is less walking. Yes, everything in Computex is in one place, so that is a welcome, welcome change. Derek says, I'm buying you a beer next CES. I'll be there. Well, I can't drink beer, man. Buy me like a cider or something. I can drink cider. Or buy me wine. Buy me a glass of wine. Or a margarita. I drink a lot of margaritas at CES. A lot. I like margaritas. Luke Snow asks, do you think you'll be going to LTX this year? Um, well, I haven't been invited, so... <laughs> uh, and and that's, that's not a knock against anybody. Linus and I are, are, are not friends. I, I don't know him. Um, he and I have talked all of one time. Um, I've talked to Luke a couple times, um, but, um, yeah, I don't think that I'd be somebody who would be invited to LTX. And considering it's proximity to Computex and several other like personal vacations that I'm planning it's pro it's unlikely that I go unless I mean I guess unless Linus reaches out which I don't think is going to happen <clears throat> uh, Kenny D says why don't more fan makers daisy chain their oh boy Daisy chain their fans like Inwin Polaris. Are they property protected? Um, so, not that I know of. I'm sure they have some kind of um, some kind of. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of copyright on that, um, or patent on that kind of design, that specific design from Inwin. But I don't think the uh, I don't. I've seen other fans use a Daisy chain approach. So I, I think it's just a matter of building the technology into the fan frames to allow them to daisy chain, which I maybe some companies don't want to do. I, I don't know. But yeah, that is one of the best things about in one fans that you can daisy chain them. All right, Derek says, with games now topping 11 gigs and 4K textures, I think the 16 gigabyte HBM2 is needed. I disagree with you. I don't, I don't know of any game that's going over 11 gigs in my testing in 4K textures. I mean, I'm sure there are some. Maybe none that I I play. I'm sure there are some, but I don't. But 16 gigs of HBM2, that's a terabyte of a terabyte per second of bandwidth. I don't know of any game that could use that. I'm sh <laughs> and to say that no game ever will is absurdly foolish. Like that, of course, a game will probably next year or something. But as of now, no games could come close to needing that. But I, I guess who knows? <clears throat> Mandos GTIA all GTI all days. Anyway, Mandos says question: Would using non-supported RAM on a Ryzen motherboard be an issue? So it's only an issue as far as um, overclocking, which means running your memory at its rated speed. So if you buy um, an unsupported kit of GDR4 3200, it's likely that it won't run any faster than 2400 or so, which will severely limit your, um, I mean, your gaming experience, if that's what you're going for. But the memory, the faster memory helps um, communication across the infinity fabric so slower memory is going to hinder performance significantly more on AMD than on Intel so check your motherboards QVL qualified vendor list for memory um, or use known Ryzen compatible memory that is your best bet when when building with that platform To enable G-Sync on a FreeSync monitor, do I need to use DVI-D port? <laughs> no, you need to use DisplayPort. Cole Alcala says, do you think single fan RTX 2060s are worth it? Uh, worth it for what? I don't know. I haven't tested any, but 
Wor what is it, worth it for what? There's a big, there's a lot of variables there. Asian Alec says, what keyboard is that in the back? Do you mean this? Um, this is the, um, geez, I, I don't know if I could tell you, actually. I have to, I have to look and see if it's, <laughs> if it's still embargoed. It's, uh, it's from Cooler Master, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, so, um, don't look at it. Pretend that's not here. I, I'm not sure. I'm unsure. It might might be okay to talk about this, but I'm not going to take any chances. It's cool, Master. It's got RGBs. That's all you need to know. Um, Joe Brown says, how much do those Lambo rentals cost? Uh, the Aventador that we rented, which is a $500,000 car, like a half a million dollar car, it's about $2,000 a day. <clears throat> um, bought five Sapphire RX 580 Nitro plus four gig, four gigabyte cards for 115 each from a miner. Good deal. Sure, if you need five RX 580s, um, those cards aren't going for that much anyway. So, and the four gigabytes is going to be limiting for you, but it's not a bad deal at all. There's still a you know a great 1080p card. Um, so. You're pro I mean, are you going to use all five of them? Do you have a use case? Are you trying to re try to flip them? I don't think you'll be able to flip them for very much more. It's, still, it's a good deal. Sorry to answer. It's a good deal, but I don't know how much you'll be able to flip them for if that's your use case there. <clears throat> Tyler Rogers, do you think RTX 2060 is good to use as just a performance card for a more towards a budgeted build or wait to see what the 1660 Ti has to offer? So the 1660 Ti at this point has all but been confirmed. Um, it sh it's less CUDA cores than a 2060, so it's not just going to be a 2060 without ray tracing. It will be hamstrung. Uh, so don't expect um, you know don't expect similar performance there. It'll be close uh, to a 2060, but it won't be quite there. So um, and we don't know exactly how it's going to perform. So I I'm not going to make any assumptions. But if you're, I mean, a budget build, a $350 GPU does not fit in a budget build. Depend, I guess depending on what your definition of budget is. But when I think of somebody building a budget system, I'm just thinking like $500, $600. And, you know, spending $350 on a 2060 is not going to do you very well when you're trying to cram as much as you can into that budget. Uh, F2F tech, is that face-to-face -face tech? Uh, when do you plan on revisiting the HD 5970? Um, I, I don't have it on the calendar yet, but I mean, that's the plan to do so. So I, I don't know. I don't, can't give you an exact date. I actually have, uh, the next month and a half already with like reviews and stuff. So, um, unfortunately I don't, I don't have it on the calendar just yet, but that is the plan. I Still have it on my shelf over there. We're going to do more with that card. So um, don't you worry, but no no exact plan just yet. Is it too late to enter in this season of Show Me Your Rig? No, absolutely not. I think we're only on episode uh, five or six. Um, and um, six, I think six. I don't know. Five or six. I'm filming another one tomorrow. And then there's another, you know, we, we do 10 episodes in a season and then the finale. So you still got time if you want to get in for sure. Um, like I said, I've said many times, I look at all of the entries that come in. I cannot respond to all of them. There's just way too many. Um, and then I pick three per episode to feature. So send in your stuff. I, I would highly recommend the, the, the pictures that I've been getting this season have been... Um, there's been a lot that have been really lackluster. Just the photo, not the computers, the photos of the computers. So um, I would recommend, as a shameless self-promotion, going and watching my video that I did on how to photograph your PC. Um, it makes your photos really stand out when you do them correctly because there are so many people that are doing it wrong. So as long as your photos are clear... There are, you know, shots of the entire case, and then you kind of zoom in and do, like, your detail shots last. 
that makes it easier for me to follow. There are literally some photos that I get that are just like somebody crammed their phone in against their motherboard and took a picture and I don't even know what the F I'm looking at. So um, don't be that guy and just take some really clear photos with good lighting. Don't take all your photos in the dark. I know your case looks cool if it's dark and your lights are on, but in photos it look, comes out looking like dog poop. So <laughs> turn some lights on so that I could see what you're seeing. And, um, and yeah, just go from there. But yes, you could send in, you could send in for the season. Um, power glove pixels. How much power Watts supply do you think Radeon seven will need? Because I know that you quizzing me. Uh, I think it's supposed to be 295 Watts. Uh, Am I right? Uh, okay. <clears throat> hey, Brian, do you play games on the side when not doing this? No. <laughs> I do not. I I can't. I don't have time. I literally will fire up a game to... to um, if, if, I ever, if I ever have, like, 10 minutes, I'll play, maybe play some. But, like, I, I don't consider that myself a gamer anymore. I just don't have the time. I have a lot of time logged on most games that I own on Steam just from benchmarking. I just don't play them. Kyle Toon says, when, when Ryzen Gen 3 comes out, will it be compatible with my MSI B450 Tomahawk? I just have a Ryzen 3 1200 and was waiting for them to come out to upgrade. Uh, it should be. Um, so most... so. Uh, AMD has committed to that socket through 2020. So the word on the street is that you just be able to hit it with a BIOS update and you'll be able to use Ryzen Gen, Ryzen, it'll be Gen 2, Ryzen, wait, Zen 2, Ryzen Gen 3, 3000 series. Man, this is confusing. Okay. White Elephant, do you like Legos? I do like Legos. I well, Not like in the childish sense, like I have a bucket of Legos, but I have some Lego things. I have like a, a Lego R2-D2 and BB-8 and Millennium Falcon. So I guess maybe I just like Star Wars, but those, those uh, I mean, they end up being really big. Like the Millennium Falcon is like this big or something. Uh, and they take a long time to put together, but they're really cool. I have them like in my, in the other room under the, like under the TV on this little stand. Um, so yeah, I guess I like Legos and Star Wars. <laughs> How do you feel about drones? I own a DJI Mavic Pro. I, I enjoy drones. James Henderson. Hey, from New Zealand. Thanks to channels like yours. I built my first PC. Thanks, man. Keep it up. That is what I love to hear. And I am happy that I could help you. Uh, Rallo P says, would you buy a new 1080 for $350? Um, would I? No, I don't need one. Um, should you? Um, maybe. That, that seems to be probably what they are going for now. I think. I honestly haven't checked, but they can't. Last time I checked, they were going for about $400. Um, so the RTX 2060s, from everything that I've seen and read... Are, are rivaling like 1070 Ti's in performance. So that's not much less than a 1080 and that is a $350 card. So that seems to be about what you should pay for that level of performance. So 1080 seems like a good deal. You get two more gigs of VRAM that way. So if you could do that, that seems, that seems good. Jacob Trent says, was that your puppy? I don't think so. I would, you would have heard him. He, he, he's, he's clumsy. Uh, what is your opinion of the EVGA audio card? Um, it was a surprise for sure. They, um, I, I, I didn't ask them for one. I don't really want to test it. 
I don't know that I have the equipment to test it properly. So good on them for trying something new. It's supposed to be awesome. Like they worked with some serious sound engineers to get that thing. Like, I mean, they had some demos up in that suite that kind of blew me away. Um, but it was just kind of out of left field, really. I did not expect that from them. But I mean, good for them for trying something new. It's supposed to be a really good product. Damn it. Lost my place again. Man. Sorry, every once in a while, um, the YouTube chat just kind of snaps down all the way down to the bottom. And I lose my where I was because I'm trying to go through as many comments as I can. Okay. I think I got it, kind of. David Gonzalez, hi, just found your channel. I was looking to buy a 16... Looking at building a $600 PC, but I'm not too sure what parts to buy. I'm not looking to game on it. Uh, well, that's a pretty lengthy conversation. Um, can't really get into that now, I suppose. I, I'm going to look into doing more budget builds on the channel. So, you know, stay tuned. Maybe I'll hit that price target soon. Mo Portillo. I'm sipping on that Hennessy, bro. What you sipping on? This is uh, this is Merlot. Gargach Hills Estate Merlot. Cheers to you. Jacob Tran, what is your opinion on 5GE? Um, I have not tried it yet, so I don't really know. I think Austin just put a video out on that today. So um, go watch his video. Maybe, maybe he's got a good insight. <clears throat> Uh, Cameron Grant says, still like those LLs, Brian. Oh, the LL fans? I still like them. I There are other fans that I like better. Um, right now, I'm running the Thermal Take Ring Trios, which look like the LLs. They kind of look better than the LLs, to be honest. Um, and they are quieter and push more air. So, I'll just run with those for now. Um, but yeah, LLs are still good, but there are definitely better fans out there. They look really good, though. The yellows look really good. <clears throat> oh, man. We're already an hour in, huh? An hour in. All right. Let me see if I can run through here, and uh, we'll talk. We'll see if I can hit some of the bigger questions. Uh, FJ Samus says, what's your ultra wide monitor mount? Uh, right now I actually just have my monitor on its native stand. I use the, it's an, I, I hate the stupid LG model numbers cause I don't, I never remember, remember the name. I have the LG 5k, um, nano IPS ultra wide. Um, and it, the stand it comes with is excellent. It's height, tilt, swivel, adjustable. Um, it, I mean, it better. It's a very expensive monitor, but um, it was perfect, perfect height, perfect configuration for the way I have my desk. So I just went with that. If Elon Musk asked you to work for him at Tesla, SpaceX, and the Boring Company, would you join? Um, probably. I don't know what use I'd be to him. Make, making, <laughs> making tech videos for Tesla. Um. Sure, it seems like a good opportunity. I actually really like my job. I have a pretty, you know, I have a decent job, and um, I get to work from home. So he'd have to pry me away with some serious dollars. Um, but sure, that would that would be pretty cool. John Von Vader, did I miss the last show me a rig, or is the season still going on? Still going on. Um, ha I mean, be a little bit of a delay because of all the CES coverage, but next episode will be out next, uh, this coming Wednesday. Lots of questions this time, man. You guys are on fire. 
What mic do you use? It's epic and I want one. Uh, this is the Rode NT1A. And um, I really, really like the way it sounds. I hope I hope it sounds as good to you guys because when I record, um, it sounds pretty badass. <clears throat> oh, Rodimus, I believe his mic is a Rode NT1. It's an NT1A, so suck it. Um, do you think I should upgrade my 1950X to the 2950X? No, that's not worth it at all. <clears throat> uh, what is the RTX Insanity? Uh, I just meant like talking about all the 2060s that were coming and the 1660 Ti's and the 1660s and 50s and whatever other cards are coming out. Um, I did want to just, you know, put that in the title in case people wanted to chat about it. We talked about the RTX 2060s already and the, a little bit on the 1660 Ti as well. So um, we've hit a whole bunch of, we've kind of been meandering. So, um, you know, sorry we didn't touch more on that. Um, if it's possible, I would get an X570 board when they come out. Uh, well, they should come out. I mean, but, you know, that we're talking like Computex time before we even hear anything concrete about that stuff. So we probably won't see a working demo until then. My cat, that's, that's a, so that's, uh, that's Newman. And he's probably looking for dinner right about now. Um, so we'll try to finish this up so I can feed the cats before they get angry. Um, I'm gonna. I went all the way down to the bottom again, so I'm just gonna start scrolling up. What camera are you using now? This is a Sony A7 III with a uh, Zeiss 16 to 35 f/4 lens. Uh, hey Brian, what are your thoughts on the Acer Predator X34P or Dell Alienware 34-inch monitor? I think. Those monitors are still very good, but, but are coming to the end of their life cycle. They're like two or three years old at this point. Um, you're going to start seeing more and more uh, 3440 by 1440 ultra wides with even higher refresh rates. You'll see 144 hertz and even possibly higher than that. So um, you probably are. So those are those monitors are probably going to drop in price pretty soon. Um, in addition, there's going to be some. I think the next evolution there is um, 3840 by 1600 monitors which uh, are going to get more popular. LG's got a really cool one coming out, 144 hertz uh, G-Sync 38 inches um, Nano IPS uh, so that's going to be coming Q2 so I think we're going to start seeing those as the popular ultra wides I think Rodimus has got to go. I've enjoyed it, but wife is home. Take care. I guess that means I have no moderator, so don't 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 everybody lose your shit at once, please. All right, three more questions. Three more. Asian Alec, do you predict that you will be able to do YouTube as your full time job anytime soon? The answer is no. Um, it's so I've gotten to the point where the channel is large enough where it makes it makes what I would call nice supplementary money. It supports itself. It pays for itself. Um, I'm able to purchase items that um, allow me to continue uh, making these videos and purchase nice camera gear and whatnot. But it is nowhere near uh, enough to support me and my family. Um, plus benefits, uh, and whatever else. So unfortunately, I'd probably it would take a lot for that to be the case. If that happens, I would love to be able to entertain that possibility. But for now, that's not what I, that's not where my goal is. It's just to kind of maintain steady growth, good content, um, keep growing the audience. Cole Alcala says, "Do you have an idea when the Inwin A1 Plus will be released?" I don't remember offhand. 
I think we talked about it in the video, in the in video. So go check that out. That would be all the information that I have besides what you might be able to find online. Uh, Mad Chammy, your cat is losing its shit. Nah, he's just goofing off back there. He's like, I don't know, humping the cat bed or something. Who knows? Um, all right, last question. Super Bowl winner. Um, let's just say I hope it's not the Patriots. I don't really care about the Patriots. Like, I have nothing really against them. I just want it. I just, uh, enough. Enough of them. I've seen them enough in the Super Bowl. I have a Super Bowl party every year at my house, and it's always the friggin' Patriots in the Super Bowl. Enough. Um, all right. Last last one. Last for real. Which field do you work in? I work in insurance. Um, okay. All right, guys. That's it. Um, thank you so much. I gotta go. I gotta feed these cats before they lose their minds. Gotta find out where the hell my dog is. Um, sorry I couldn't get him on the stream. Next time I will have him and I'll, I'll hold him up and shake his little weird looking face for you guys. Um, but thanks so much for hanging out, tuning in. Uh, and, um, it was a good live stream. You guys were awesome today. And I hope you guys learned something. I learned something. And, uh, I guess that's about it. All right, guys. Have a good night. And, uh, new video tomorrow night? Tomorrow night or Monday morning. Something like that. All right.